my name is Nikki Emilike, CEO of Nisden College. Welcome to Centerpoint Africa with Nikki. We're here with legendary actor, film director, filmmaker, Tarila Thompson. Hello, Tarila Thompson. Can you hear us? <laughs> Yeah, clearly. You can hear How do you me. Do? <laughs> well, it's a pleasure having you on our program. Well, yeah. Tarila, um, we actually been talking about a couple of weeks ago about your exciting film in the creek. Can you please tell us about it and um, just give us a, a little synopsis about it? Thank you. Okay. Um... I can start from <laughs> the fact that it's it's an it's an action adventure. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's the story of Niger Delta. Um, a whole lot of things are put together to bring it to fine life. But we're telling the story right from the heart of the region. Yeah. Uh, with whole people that have experienced um, one thing or, or the other during the, the entire issues, and then we are looking at a a possible positive resolution to the crisis of the Niger Delta and all that. But beyond that, of course, there's a razzmatazz of, of cinematic razzmatazz of, um, you know, action, drama sequences, heavy CGI's and all that to be able to explain, to narrate the story as it were. So uh, that's really what the front of the Greek, the Greek is. Uh, if I'll give you a brief synopsis, is the story of you know, with all this village degradation and all things going on and the communities being victimized and they have absolutely no voice, uh, to an extent, I get to an extent where some of the youths uh, decided to agitate in their own little way, you know, with sticks and um, and um, they, they confronted the multinational oil company establishments. And, but they were, of course, repelled by heavily armed uh, Nigerian military guys, you know, repelled and uh, with a lot of casualties and all that. So and that's when they came to realize that um, they probably may need to be a lot more uh, diplomatic or sort of uh, more aggressively engaging. And the, the story goes on that they now approach, approach the, the services of a local school teacher who's um, um, who I, I I wouldn't know what what to use here. He, he's like um, he was, he's like um, the agent provocateur, the man who understands so much, uh, but has been waiting for an opportunity to express his knowledge of of solutions to the issue of the Niger Delta. Yeah. And when since this when this character came on board, uh, the entire dynamics and the entire philosophy changed, and that's what the story is all about. Wow. Um, can I ask a little bit more about, can you tell a little bit of a story about the Niger Delta um, for people who are, who are not familiar with the problems that they have there? Oh, well, the Niger Delta, everybody knows, is, is the oil region in Nigeria. It's, um, it contributes 95% uh, of um, uh, the export, the total export of Nigeria. That's where the Nigerian economy is totally based. And the region is overrun with what I could consider very unethical exploration by uh, the multinationals. Um, a lot of things are done here outside the rules, you know. And then the, after, the aftermath of this very insensitive um, um, attitude has uh, put paid, uh, brought serious untold hardship to the host communities and to the people of that region. There's a whole lot of strange diseases, you know, born from the, uh, the endless flare of, uh, of gas. And then worst of them all is the spillage. Uh, you know, we have thousands and thousands of incidents of spillage that have destroyed farmland, destroyed the waters. And these people are people that are predominantly uh, uh, occupied. Their predominant preoccupation is fishing and farming. Yeah. And when you destroy the lands, they cannot farm. And when yeah. you, you, you destroy the waters, all the, the living creatures there are dying. So the ecosystem is in total shambles as we speak. 
So there's no, they have no major sources of substance of, of, of surviving. So you find out that they have probably have to sometimes migrate to the city, to the established cities, to buy food stock. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be in the reverse. Mm -hmm. the, the local dwellers, the food dwellers are supposed to make food and fish, mm -hmm. uh, uh, supply food and fish items to the established communities. But the reverse is the case now. And, and um, they are in total squalor, abject poverty, you know, and there's wow. institution and in the entire It is that bad. Wow. So um, does In the Creek show all of this um, headache that the uh, region is having? And, um, and also, does it, you know, uh, 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 the story, I know it's about a teacher, but however, does it capture all the elements to do with the uh, region um, pro problems in regards to poverty? Yes, precisely. Precisely. The, the movie is an embodiment of everything you want to know about the Niger Delta issue. It's an embodiment, including the politics. Yeah. You know, and um, it embodies everything. We try to capture the essence of these issues in motion picture. And for the first time, really, because what people have heard about the Niger that are predominantly related to documentaries, and yeah. um, uh, about 80% of these documentaries were produced by foreigners yeah. uh, in the UK, in the US, and all that. And, and there's, to an extent, they can go. They have limitations. You understand? Yeah. There are places they cannot be assessed and all that. But, but we went through, we went beyond that. We even filmed in some of the the militant uh, camp establishment. Wow. You know, yeah, the farmers can fight. We filmed there uh, where Tom Polo, Tom Polo and his uh, henchmen held sway. But the thing is, we, we filmed exactly when the Niger Delta was so volatile to strangers, especially Caucasians, the whites. Yeah. And then I happened to have filmed with um, actors and crew members from Hollywood from the UK, you know, mixed, um, from mixed race. And then um, I took them to the Niger Delta, where wow. naturally they will be kidnapped uh, instantly. <laughs> how, how, <laughs> did you, how were you able to sort out the security to make sure that they were safe? <laughs> uh, each, of the, each of the states I had to fail. Okay. I had to go through the authorities, especially the state government. Oh, OK. So they provided. Yeah, they provided security, you know, policemen, JTF and all that, you know. But the issue here is the, the militants themselves were, yeah. were so happy with what we're doing that they supported us. Yeah. They actually asked us to tell the policemen to not to come. Okay. They don't want to be, they, they don't want the, the, their own security network to come and estimate them. So they provided the security. The militants were the one guiding and protecting mm -hmm. the crew members yeah. and all the Caucasians. They were the ones working because a lot of them filmed, the movie. They, they replicated themselves, they presented themselves in the movie. Uh, most of those who you've seen in the movie are not actors, they are real, real life militants. Wow. And, and it made everything look so real. It made oh, everything real. look so real because they were not there to pretend to be another person. They were just being themselves. Wow. Um, what made you really want to start and, you know, make this film um, for your audience? Um, what, what started um, this for you? Sorry, um, um, I didn't what, get that. What made you start um, um, in the creek? What, what decision made you to start it and um, and um, basically okay. think about starting this movie that actually captures um, the region and neither? No. Yeah, please, <laughs> if you can tell us. Can you hear me? Okay, first of all, I'm, I'm from Niger Delta. I'm from yeah. Niger Delta. Okay. I'm from Niger Delta. And um, secondly, my interest was informed by the fact that um, I was on a tour of duty 
uh, uh, across the creeks and so most of their communities in the Niger Delta uh, to report projects, uh, uncompleted projects or abandoned projects and all that. It was a feasibility. And during that war, I saw things with, that were mind-boggling. You know, yeah. I, I saw pain, anxiety. I saw, I saw deprivation. Yeah. I saw total ignominy. I saw real. I, I saw below poverty. And I was wondering why on how these people were even existing up to that time. Mm -hmm. And I felt this was beyond the documentary and the documentation. This was be, this should be beyond it. And the only way the whole world will see things and appreciate them somehow is if it's brought in form of um, a movie, yeah. where it forms both ways. It, it, it forms a, a, a basis for entertainment, <clears throat> while you are also able to appreciate the real problem of these people. Sometimes, somehow, you laugh. You know, you see things that will make you laugh. But deep down, you also be able to meditate on what you've seen and then proper solution. The movie is basically not there to call out any institution, any organization. It's just there to present the pictures as it were so that you can also have make informed decision on say, okay, this is the way we can help these people. This is the way we can be of use to this people. This is where we can ameliorate suffering um, from the creek dwellers in this region. This is how we can all come together you know, um, this is beyond agitation. If they allow these people to go back into the bush, it, it won't be as easy as it were. They are going to be probably, it's going to be probably terrible. It's going to be probably worst. And the, the big, the first victim is the Nigerian government, and then their, their associates, their allies, uh, which yeah. is the multinationals. Yeah. So we don't want this to happen. We want we want progress for everybody. Yes. You know, we want the community to also understand and appreciate uh, the fact that they are giving something and they should be getting something in return. Yeah. You know, that's what this movie educates. That's the, the front and back of this movie. But the good thing is it's not a documentary, it's yeah. a feature film. Yeah. You know, and it's it's loaded with everything you need to see in a standard Hollywood first class big budget film, you know. We did a whole lot to achieve that because it took us a long time to, to, to finish this work. You know, yeah. four years of shooting, three years of post-production. Wow. Spread over South Africa, uh, London, uh, and then uh, Nigeria. Yeah, wow. Um, I know this was a big budget movie. <laughs> yeah. um, I think, you know, this is an amazing movie. I mean, if you basically watch the clip in terms so you know, you will see all the different aspects that was added to it. To it. What, um, what made you choose the actors and actresses that were um, actually uh, present on the film? And then if you can also call out the names of the actors and actresses you used uh, on, uh, on the um, film as well. OK, yeah, we have, um, we have from Africa, from Nigeria, yeah. precisely. We have a Motola, Yalade yes. Akinde. Yeah. We have um, Beverly Naya. We have Van Vika. We have um, Emmanuel Logo. We have Enesta Suzu. We have um, we have um, a whole lot of other other stars. And then from the UK, we have uh, Andrew Mackenzie. We have uh, John Dennis Roma. We have uh, Michael Eno. All these are big stars in, in Europe. Uh, yes. Predominantly in German, in German film industry. Uh, in Germany and yeah. then in, in Switzerland, mixed, yeah. And then we have we have a Surika, something I forgot his surname, and we have a, <laughs> a, a Smith Taylor, Taylor Smith, okay. a whole lot of them. Um, but basically, from Africa, uh, Patience has worked for, uh, was also with us. Uh, she starred. Um, Chinoso Arubai, another fast rising, very talented. Art. She yes. was there. She was awesome too. Um, wow! Uh, but because the story, the story is predicated on a community of people, restiveness, and very, very unfriendly environment. 
you know, you, you need to be very, very, um, how would I put it? You, you need to be very, very professional in your casting. Of course. Uh, yeah, people that can deliver perfectly and people that can give a semblance of what you're trying to represent. Yes. You know, so it took us a whole lot of time to do this. And then I also starred, I starred as one of the major characters. Um, it wasn't easy because I probably would have wanted someone else to, but because of the nature of the character, you know, there's a lot of local languages involved and all that. Okay. And then the nature of the character too had to depict the look of that traditional content, which I believe I have. If you look at me where very well, you know that I look <laughs> just like the typical is on. <laughs> you know, so it, it, it was easy. It was easy and it was fantastic. Okay. And uh, uh, we've done a whole lot of things. Uh, so oh. that's it. That's the much. Oh, thank you. Um, you. You stated that you were one of the actors. Um, in your, uh, what's the name of the um, the name of the actual uh, the, the actual one you chose <laughs> to play? You know, um, and why did you choose that character? You know, because um, um, it's really important. Why did you choose the character? And when you were acting, why did you think, okay, this was the character that would uh, create uh, the element I'm looking for in terms of filmmaking? Why did you choose it? Okay, I, first of all, I didn't choose. Okay. I, I didn't even want to act. Uh, I just wanted to focus on the technicalities. Yeah. But we cast the cast for that character was a serious problem. We we we, we did a table cast for so many, and yeah. then so many came to read. Yeah. And the casting director, who happened to be um, a German, uh, John Dennis, keep having problems. Um, they had after reading the script, they had the idea of what that kind of person should look like. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be your typical muscular. Uh, intimidating feature. Yeah. You know, it has to be somebody with a mien, somebody with a mien, somebody you you just look at, the only thing you see is a very, very native intelligence uh, and all that. Yeah. Yeah, but, but, but when he opens his mouth, when he opens his mouth, you you, 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 you hear things that are very philosophical and he, he commands instant presence. Wow. So, during the course, while I was trying to direct some of those casts on how to go and what to say and how to look and all that, yeah, the guy he just kept looking, he just kept looking, and at the end of the day, he called said, "Can he speak with me in private?" And I said, "Yes." He said, "Can you save us the trouble and time and do this yourself? Because you look everything about the character and you sound everything like the character and all that." I'm a director. I easily knew that. I knew I could, but I just didn't want to do it because, you know, I have my hands full technically already and all that. So I didn't want that distraction. And I said, well, I don't know, because we've been on it for like two weeks. Money is running. Time is running. We are paying these people um, um, every day. We're paying everybody from the UK every day. You know, we're communicating with the embassies. They just want to make sure their citizens are safe yeah. where they're filming. So there's a whole lot of things going on. They are insured. So and I said, okay, fine. Um, I thought of, I thought about it, but I just want to make sure it's the right decision for all. And that's how I, I landed the role. Wow. And I can actually, <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was easy because it was so natural for me. The difficult wow. part was the fact that I had to also direct. So wow. sometimes the monitor, you're looking at the door and you're taking your lines and all that. I think that was a little bit peculiar. Yeah, well, thank you very much. And I need to also ask you um, about your earlier filmmaking, um, about your career and what made you start um, filmmaking and being an actor and what year did you start? And, you know, I can see that you have the passion of um, filmmaking and director. So if you can actually tell us what made you go into um, filmmaking. Yeah, it's it's been it's it's been how it it's has been I've been inspired from childhood. I always loved movies, you know. Then we used to watch Western the West Western film, Cowboy. Yeah. And then later James James Bond, 
I'm one of the biggest fans they could, they could ever have. I love uh, Sean Connery, oh. Sean Connery, uh, uh, Roger Moore, and all that. And then one day I just feel like I, I could be this and I could be that. You know the way it is. <laughs> those, I do dream. So, yeah. so, so I started by writing screenplay. Fortunately, I had an I, I had an uncle, yeah. Chipedu Boma. Yeah. He was it was a big name in the in showbiz in Nigeria then in the oh. in the early in the late sixties, early seventies and eighties and and um, he, he made films too and they were showing it in cinemas in Port Harcourt where I was raised. And when I tell people that the, the star of this movie is my uncle, <laughs> they, they wouldn't believe. I, I once got punched for saying that. Somebody said you, you like you can lie you can lie to her. <laughs> Can you tell this guy, you know, because they seem like, as they say, they seem, they seem like someone you cannot even assess. Yeah. I said, it's my uncle. He both came to our house. He came to your house here in Port Harcourt. Are you kidding me? And then boo, 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 boo. They called me a sort of names. I just said, okay. No okay. problem. You know, yeah, but I fell in love with it. And it's been so natural. I, 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 I just naturally walked into that career, yeah. you know, effortlessly because like a, a whole lot of things were, was inside already waiting you know, to be engaged. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, we're about to actually finish um, interviewing you, but I would also want you to tell the audience about this movie. I know it's, start, it's going to, um, uh, I think it's next year. Is it next year that it's meant to be uh, uh, in the, in the uh, movie theaters? Is next year, yeah? So if you can actually yeah. tell um, people um, why should they go to um, the cinema to watch In the Creek, you know, so this is your time to speak with the audience. So um, <laughs> yeah, that, that's the Okay, it's very, very yeah. simple. Um, yeah. First of all, I'm an, I'm an experienced and exposed film make maker, not just locally, but internationally. Yeah. Um, you watch audience and um, audience all over the world, there's one thing common about them. Yes. They just love good pictures, you know, beyond the issue, they love good pictures. That's why films like uh, Fast and Furious uh, franchise, they're always very big box pictures. Yes. As far as I'm there's, there's basically no big story about Fast and Furious, you know, but they relate action sequences and family values, you know, uh, the, the love sequences and all that. But basically, it's all about the resume class. It's all about the car chase, yeah. the chopper chase, or the boat chase, and all these stunts, the big stunts. That's what people just want to see sometimes. People yeah. just want to be happy. Of you understand? Course. Yeah. People want to be relieved from issues. Issues of the world is just too much for anybody. So you don't want to go to the movie and start saddening your, your, your mind again. So we did in the creek with those people as our target audience. Just go out there when it comes out. We're looking yeah. at first quarter of next year. We'll be still talking to distributors worldwide. Yeah. So you go out there and have serious fun. It's not just about issues of magic. Issues of magic is, 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 the, is the background of the story. It's yeah. the theme. Yeah. It's the theme. So you'll be able to appreciate what people are going through. But I can assure you, it's all about fun. This action sequences, it's drama, it's captivating, it's breathtaking. Uh, yeah. From the beginning to the end, you probably do not have time for your popcorn. <laughs> Well, thank you. Um, I would actually say, you know, I, I, I had the honor to be your um, executive project manager in regards to this film, and I'm so excited about it. And we're actually going to be interviewing. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Clearly. Yeah, you can hear me. I'm giving you thumbs up. <laughs> you can hear me. Okay. We're going to interview all the other actors and actresses that's in the film. And we're so happy to um, have you on the show um, on Skype because um, you're right, actually thousands of miles away. You know, we're actually connecting with you on Skype. And that's the reason um, we're able to have this kind of communication, you know. Um, uh, we're just very, very happy to have you on the on this program. Um, 
what I can say is, um, I know I'm going to be welcoming you back um, as we go along and promote this m lovely movie, excellent, and um, I would be carrying on to tell people about this movie and how they need to be captivate themselves and understand the level of um, importance you've done and created in regards to this film. So we do, we do appreciate this. So um, thank you so much, legendary um, Tarila Thompson, and um, welcome yeah. to Centerpoint Africa. Thank you so much. We're about to go, and um, yeah. it's, it's been lovely talking to you. Um, my name is Nikki Amelie Casey. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you Ahana. very much. Yeah. Yeah. I heard, a, I heard a lot about your program, and yeah. once in a while, I see, you know, in Nigeria, we don't have uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, direct cable source to yeah. Sky uh, 872. Yeah. We only have Sky News on DSTV. Oh, OK. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but once in a while, through the uh, internet, we see a couple we of stuff. We can be able to say. We'll be very proud of no. you. No, know, thank you. I was told that uh, <laughs> you'll you, you be there for us. We're so little. We're so, we, yeah, we, we, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, thank you so much, uh, legendary Taylor Thompson, and thank you so much for gracing this occasion with us. My name is Nikki Emilike, CEO of Nisden College. Welcome to Center Up Point Africa with Nikki as we carry on this program next week, Thursday, 3 to 4 p.m. Um, join us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you.